What's going on, man? It's your man, Big Sale of H-O-H and I see. Today's interview, man, is going to be very interesting. I'm here today with one of the new heads of one of the biggest MCs in Atlanta right now, in Georgia, I would say. Um, and he has uh, he has his hands full. Um, a lot of you guys know him. Uh, some of you know him. A lot of you guys don't know him. But understand this. Uh, he's not a rookie in the game. He's been here. He's been around. And we're going to just chop it up with him today, man, and uh, introduce him to you. And we're going to ask him the question. You know how FHO do. We're going to ask him some tough questions. And we're going to just give you guys a chance to meet him and just see who he is and his direction that he's taking this new organization. The, the organization. Not a new organization, but the new direction that he's taking the organization. All right, y'all stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing King Dibs. What's going on, everybody? Introduce yourself, let them know what's, what's going on with you. Dibs. You know, some people know me as Scott, some people know me as Dibs. Been riding about 22 years now. Been down here in Atlanta about 10 years. Been with the Kings five years. I'm quiet, don't do a whole lot of talking. If I talk, I mean it. If I say it, I mean it. Okay. That's pretty much how I am. You've been recently pushed into the the new position of president of Kings of the South. How has that been? Uh, it's been cool. Uh, just trying to, you know, put my vision into what I think the King should be into effect. Uh, I think previous leadership did a great job for the years that he had it. And now it was just time for, you know, fresh blood. Everybody just wanted some fresh blood. And I was asked to be into it. And I was thrusted into the position. And I hit the ground running, you know, just trying to get ready for this huge anniversary we got coming up. And just want everybody to enjoy what the Kings actually bring to the set. It's a good time. Being a King five years, but being on the set 22 years, what advantage does you think that, the, do you think that gives you as being the head of the Kings of the South? Uh, it gives me a pretty decent advantage. Like I said, I'm only but uh, 37 years old. Uh, I've seen organizations outside come and go, rise and fall. I'm um, not from Atlanta, from New York, so I was riding a sports bike up there, ripping and running through the BQE with everybody else. Um, and I know that no matter how big the organization gets, if you don't have a brotherhood inside of it, it's going to fall. So all I want to do is bring a brotherhood in. You know, I've been a part of organizations all my life, and I know brotherhoods work, and that's what I want to bring. I just want everybody to stay tight. If I look to my left, I look to my right, I know I ain't got no troubles, no worries. Okay. Five years as a king, what have you seen change? Have you, I mean, besides the growth, what have you seen Man, in five years? Five years. <laughs> I done seen them come, go. I done seen groupies. I done seen, I done seen it all. I done seen us from having uh, meetings at Shameless Plug, Cloud Nine, Wrestling Around, <laughs> Street, that's my spot. 177, ain't it? 177, that's my spot. I done seen us from having meetings in there to having the junction, to now having the kingdom, to being everywhere we are. Yeah. Like we, before before Cloud Nine, there was 12 of us meeting at Dugan's. Okay. So, you know, I done seen the whole club grow. And it's grown to something beautiful that, honestly, everybody in Atlanta that's on the Harley really wants to be a part of. Whether they want to be in the club or be around us, because we all have a good time. We welcome everybody. Purple, black, yellow, don't make a difference. If you about riding your bike and you about having a good time, you about being with us. Seeing as though Kings of the South, okay, with all of the other premier clubs that's out there, Rare Breed, Iron Bread, um, you got, and now you got a lot of other clubs riding Harleys now. Mm -hmm. What what is it about Kings of the South that makes us unique? You know what? When I first joined the Kings of the South, it actually came to me in Batman's garage when he's putting my music in my bike, and he was just like, you know, we grown, just come fuck us. So I went. And I hung out, and what I liked about it was grown men were held accountable. Uh, it was a bunch of grown men on their bikes held accountable for their own actions okay. inside the organization. You know, you have your choices of it, but I just like the way that we as a club hold each other accountable. We as men talk to each other. We close the door, we work out whatever we have to work out, but we don't never air our grievances in public. <laughs> We keep everything to ourselves like a family's supposed to. And if you outside looking in, you never know what's wrong with us. Okay. That's what I like. Being a, a all Harley club, being the fact that you know most of the, your outlaw clubs here in Georgia are all Harley, 
Has there ever been conflicts between that? Uh, there has. Yeah. But um, as men, we step to the table and we sit down and we close the door and we talk it out and we work it out. I mean, that's what as a man, that's what you want to do. Yeah. You know, you don't you don't talk about nobody where they can't reach out to you. You sit down, you speak it verbally, and you hopefully come to a peaceful agreement. And you just keep it pushing from there. 37, uh, most people would think it's kind of young to be president of a organization as big as the Kings. And when I say as big, we're not even just talking about numbers. We're just talking about with everything that they have in place, with them growing into multiple chapters and charters and just trying to spread their wings. As a 37-year-old president, that, that's a lot on your shoulders. That's a lot on my shoulders, but uh, I mean, if I don't think I could have did it, I wouldn't have done it. Uh, like I said, I've been around, I've been doing my own thing since I was 17 years old. And like I said, me personally, while I'm only 37, I hold everybody accountable because I want everybody to hold me accountable. Yeah. So if I do it wrong, come holler at me. If you don't like what I got to say, we can talk about it again. But um, I don't think that the age has anything to do with it. I think, you know, as long as you respect each man, you respect each person. Okay, we back. Um, brief interruption. I think we left off on the question of you being 37 years old, yeah. handling the role of president, yeah. presidency for such a large club. Yeah. And basically you were saying that age is, age is not a factor. Age is irrelevant to me. Okay, so let me ask you this then, Prez. How do you deal with some of your members that you have that are almost twice your age or, or yours plus 10 or whatever? That's my sister Meanie Mean. Oh. <laughs> Handle mine. No matter how old you are, if you're a man, you're a man. So I don't cuss, I, don't, I speak direct, I speak what's on my mind. Yeah. It don't make a difference how old you are. Same way I'm speaking to y'all, same way I'm speaking to Seth, the same way I speak to my Paul. Yeah. I speak to everybody the same way, straight up. And now if it has to go a different way, I'll try to bring it back to the neutral ground, but I'm not worried about it going the other way because I speak with respect. 22 years riding a motorcycle. What have you seen? Man, I done seen <laughs> everything. I done seen... A dude head get chopped off by the back of a box truck. I done seen a dude die in the wheel well of a car. I done seen my brother fly over my head. I done seen it all. Yeah. I think, you know what I mean? There's, there's more to see, but I, I done seen enough. I mean, I done rode a sport bike from New York City to the tip of Texas and back just because I wanted to see if I could do it. Mm. Now, I'll never do that again. <laughs> but, you know, honestly, you know, I taught myself how to ride. It was just something my godfather used to race. He always told me, like, yo, if you want to ride, teach yourself. Yeah. So I was doing some things at the time. I came to a little bit of money, and I bought me a bike. And I towed up in the first week and bought another one and got better each time. Yeah. And that, that's just been me. Like, I'm not afraid to fail. Like, you know, if you, if you don't try, you'll never fail. How important do you think it is for the local non-OMCs to function with the local OMCs? I think it's, I think it's, uh, I think it's very important, honestly. I think it's important just because it's like a respect factor. You know, uh, the saying is we players on bikes, you know what I mean? You gotta respect those that actually live this life 24-7. Okay. Um, now, do we gonna see things differently? Yeah, we're gonna see things differently, but I think the respect always has to be there you got to give respect where respect is due. You know, that's, that's, you know, people earn their respect, you, you got to respect them. They got to earn it first, but once they earn it, you got to respect them. Yeah. And you respect it, you shake your hand, you pound them up, drink a beer, have a shot, do what y'all do. And you might go left, they might go right. But you got to respect it. It has to be cohesion because when it's all said and done, if I'm on the side of the road, broke down, I need that man to stop to make sure I'm okay. Okay. Because it's a whole different lifestyle. Once you get on that bike, it's a whole different world. Do you think um, with some of the rumors of involving the Kings and just them being with the braggadocious spirits that they have, a lot of people, a lot of people say that the Kings are arrogant. They say that um, that the Kings, you know, they just a bunch of just arrogant cats who just think they all of this and all of that. Um, and sometimes it kind of rubs, you know, people the wrong way. Some of the OMCs um, have have mentioned it, and even some of the locals. Um, how do you help bridge that, or how do you help repair that? Man, anybody that steps on the bike is arrogant. Female, male, kid, alien. If you step on the bike, you gotta be arrogant. You got no doors, no airbags. It's you with helmet in the ground. Yeah. So you gotta be arrogant. 
to, to buy a bike for $25,000 and then put $40,000 in accessories on it and then do it again in five years, you got to be arrogant. Okay. So there's arrogance through everybody. So, you know, not everybody's going to like everything. Everything's not for everybody. The way my bike looks, you may not like it, but that's mine. That's yeah. my arrogance. So it's not up to me to decide who should or shouldn't like my arrogance. My arrogance is quiet. Like, I keep to myself. But that's just me. It's kind of like what you're saying that it's not even a personal thing. It's just, no, it's not, it's yeah, just it, the life. it's just the life. So it's, it's no, the life. It yeah. has nothing to do with it. Like you know, you know, if you don't like what somebody's doing, you're a grown, you're a dope. Yeah. Voice your opinion, but it's just the life. That's the why we got into this life because it's for, supposed to be for the freedom. Mm. Isn't that what everybody says in their hearts? You go in there, live, live free, free, ride, ride hard. hard. And, uh, yeah. It's for the freedom. You get in the bike. There's nothing like it. Yeah. It's pure freedom. Okay. And okay. Once you get on it, you'll never get off of it, and that's what it's about. So. If I'm supposed to be free, let me be free. Okay, you and your VP, King Measy Max. Y'all know King Measy. Everybody knows King Measy. You guys are night and day. Yeah. How do you balance that? Easy. We talk every day. Okay. Before I was the president, before he was the vice president, we was on the ground. We drink. And the, the fact that we night and day, me personally, I think works best. Okay. Because if you have two that's hooping and hollering, you'll never get anywhere. Okay. If you have two that's quiet, you'll never get anywhere. Measy's going to be loud. He's going to get up and close to win your face. Yeah. Me personally, I'm going to say what I got to say. I'm only going to say it one time. We can sit there. We can talk. I never get louder than this. This yeah. is how loud as I get. And it's just, I think it's just a perfect mixture. Because like I said, before we were in these positions or are in these positions, we still spoke. And I've never changed from the day I met Measy. He's never changed. We know what to expect out of each other. And I think it works great because before we was president, vice president, we was partners. Yeah. So it's nothing for me to pick up the phone and call my partner and figure out what the problem is and get it fixed. Being the fact that with all that you have, being a restaurant owner, I think you own a construction company and a few other things, do you worry about time being a factor as being a president of an organization? Nah, not at all. Um, a president leads. You know, and not everybody was built to be a leader. I feel that I am a leader. Um, time is not an issue to me because I don't know if y'all saw my son was here. I keep my kids wherever we go. My kids go to bike night. My kids come to meeting. My kids go to the round robin. If I go on the road, my kids come with me. If I don't have them, they won't be there. Yeah. If that's somewhere I have to be, my kids are going to be the anniversary week, bike night. You'll probably see three of my kids there. Why? Because I have them that weekend, and I'm not going to sit there and pawn them off to somebody. They need to see real life. Yeah. And I keep my kids around me. So time is not of the issue. You make time for what you want to be a part of. I want to be a part of this since day one, and since the day I came on, I've gone hard. There's not been a time where I needed to be someplace, and I wasn't there. I've never missed a meeting since I've been a king. Okay. Whether I was sick, didn't want to go, aggravated with the club, I was still there. Time is not of, uh, not of importance. I'm going to be there. That's who I am. You spoke on. Um, I just you just dropped the word aggravated with the club. One thing I've one thing I've experienced and one thing I've learned is that when you become part of an organization, especially with so many different eclectic people from all walks of life, different cities, different states, different mindsets, it it, it can be frustrating. But one of the things I'm gonna tell you guys is this: a lot of people always ask me, "Sell, why are you still a king, man? With everything you've been through and." Just some of the stuff that we've noticed, you kind of caught a little bit of hell. But one thing I'm going to tell you is this. When you do get that moment, man, when your brothers are there and we standing and we shining and, and the world is almost perfect, those are the things you hold on to. It's just like a family. Like you just saw my sisters. We don't always get along. We don't always agree on everything. Hell, it might be she wanted spaghetti, I wanted fried chicken. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But just like a family, you work through it and you work it out. The biggest thing I think about being in any organization is commitment. Once you decide that this is what you want to do, be committed. Because you have to understand it's going to be ups and it's going to be downs. It's going to be sideways. It's going to be uh, unfamiliar places, people, attitudes, characters. But as long as you stay focused on the number one prize, and that was to be a part of a club and to do your part to make the club better, you can understand all that and get past that. Um, do you agree with that as a president and, and expound on it if you will? Yeah, I mean. At the end of the motherfucking day, I don't give a fuck what you are doing in your life. 
because I'm too busy doing what the fuck I'm doing in my life. In quote. What up, man? It's your boy, Big Cell. Thank you for staying tuned. This is part one of my conversation with King Dibs, the new president of the King of the South. I hope you learned something. There's so much more to go. Again, this is part one. Stay tuned for part two. This is your boy, Big Cell, F-H-O-H-N-I-C. Thank you for staying tuned. Thank you for watching the page. Thank you for supporting. Much love.